so I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you today from the lands of the Gaiamagal people. Um, I'd like to extend my respect to elders past and present and any First Nations people watching. Sovereignty was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we are once again here to dive into the wonderful world of Warrior Nun. Joining me today is the season's main antagonist, the supposed angel who always seemed to be steps ahead of Ava and the gang. Despite it all, the fans were left wondering if he was truly the villain um, or if there's something worse waiting for the OCS in season three. Um, it is a joy and a pleasure to welcome William Miller. Thank you very much. <laughs> pleasure to be, pleasure to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little warning before we get into it. As you all should know by now, this is going to be a relatively spoiler heavy interview. Um, we will be talking about season two. So if you've not seen seasons one and two of Warrior Nun, get over there, watch it right now on Netflix, and then come straight back here and uh, and listen to this interview. William, first of all, who is Adriel in your words? It's quite a difficult question to answer because um, season one, we we had so little to work on within the law and when we finished and we were uh, we were hoping to get a season two uh simon simon barry and i kind of got together and, and he what's wonderful sorry that's my parrot making noise well it, it's okay <laughs> so he 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 kind of said well let's try and put our heads together and, and if you have any, any ideas and um, he's wonderful that way because he he's he's very good with input from from actors. He's very generous, uh, allowing us to to make things our own on 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 many levels. And um, to me, talking about villains is always difficult because I never think anybody's truly bad or yeah. or truly good. So, I mean, especially if you're an actor, you always try and play characters as real and and yeah. true and and basically you play people yeah we're all flawed yeah some more so than others but with adriel the first thing we have to consider with adriel is that he's not from this world he's from another one and we don't know exactly what happened in that other world all we know about adriel is that he's the second that was sent to retrieve the halo we theoretically don't know what happened with the first yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i have my own theory <laughs> <laughs> and he succeeded, but decided that it was a weapon powerful enough to maybe overturn whatever whatever it is that sent him there to get it. Um, yeah. We know that there is war going on elsewhere, and he has his own agenda with it. Now, whether or not that agenda is favorable is, is for the good of the many. Um, we're not sure. I do believe that he's truthful in everything he says, but I believe that he got trapped here by trying to do exactly what he's done in season two, which is trying to use Earth as a as a, as a staging platform from which to ignite the uh, the rescue of, of what he considers the universe. Um, yeah. Be that in detriment of of, of this world, I, I'm not sure. We'd, we'd have to investigate further and hopefully the show gets to season two three and it, it will go it will dive further into the yeah the law that which i which I, I i think is great because we move on to something that has been uh warrior nun's own law of of what christianity is and what religion is and we yeah. we dive straight sci-fi which i think is it's such a great leap within the show and and i really hope the show does get into season three because i think it's where things are going to start getting really interesting yeah the fans I are working hard for that though so you know I think that I, uh, I, it's definitely up there. You know, I have nothing but, but um, gratitude and we're all very humbled by the reaction of, of, of the fandom. Uh, it, it's it's overwhelming and it's it's amazing. You guys are awesome. Because um, Adriel was cheated by humanity and by and by Christianity in particular, yeah. I do think there is resentment there. And no matter how long Adriel lives or, or what life... Uh, as he mentions that life doesn't time doesn't move the same for them but being trapped in this world time does move at the pace this world moves and for being trapped for a thousand years <laughs> i can imagine it it probably pissed him off quite a lot and he wasn't willing to go through the same ordeal and be cheated again so yeah. i do justify his behavior in a way christianity was that the pope was aware of who he is yeah. and what he was and they were still aware that he was under there and and even so, they they kept him there, so they used him. All that being considered, I I think that that he was letting them off pretty 
pretty lightly, <laughs> considering what he's capable of. Yeah, I don't think that he was he had any intention of 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 going the way he went in the end, but mm. he wasn't going to fall around and wait for things to go his way. He had yeah. to he had to become violent, yeah. and then you know it's it's always I think it's always a lot more fun to play things a bit darker, a bit black. Allows our heroes to be more heroic. And allows the audience to have a bit more fun with with our villains. You know, yeah. we're after all, we are talking about fiction. We are talking about having to entertain, yeah. and what entertains more than 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 evil. <laughs> so true. Nobody thinks that they are the villain, right? No one goes into something being like, "I am the bad guy." They everyone has their own reasons and motivations for doing something. And the way you played Adriel, it was very convincing in the sense of like that dark charisma to it that was very drawing and that made you go oh well yeah i get it <laughs> I, i'm a big fan of of uh criminal shows mm -hmm. because i i do get a lot of villains um i do play a lot of villains but i enjoy playing villains because uh, as i said i think they're they have flaws as, as people as they're, they're flawed human beings they've yeah. they've had problems that usually comes from their childhood yeah i i the charisma of of, of be, being able to entrap your victims there, there's a part of you that has to be seductive there's a part of you that has to be calling for the for the victim to actually um agree yeah. to, to go with. and and then the horror turning point comes when you know you you get your kick off by by being harmful or by hurting the other person because yeah. the other person the other person basically becomes the incarnation of that which harmed you or, or hurt you or, or and it's something that you can't allow or don't want to allow to leave. Adriel's case, um, I think it's more a question of of, of the necess necessity of, to, of of having the appropriate amount of power to become who he become. Um, there's there's a phrase within the within the show, the, the last episode. He says, "To become God, I need to imprison God." He doesn't even talk about killing her, mm. and I don't think. He ever talks about killing anyone uh, you know to what extent he actually murders people himself i don't know i, yeah. I i'm guessing he's probably done a lot of that as i always say is it for the greater good i don't know we'll, we'll have to dive into that season three and, and see see what what's behind his words yeah. you know i i think that we had very clever writing on both season uh, seasons and i i felt very identified. I went. I was brought up Catholic and in a, in a very Catholic school, and and yeah. things were said and and done. I lost my father very early on, and I wasn't satisfied with the answers that 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 they were giving me. Yeah. And not only that, the power they had over you as a child to convince you that their message was the real one. Yeah. Um. Quite early on, I I I refused to believe it because I had a lot of questions, and 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 I started to look for answers elsewhere. And to the extent that I became in thought, I, I became uh, obsessed with history because I wanted to know where all of this comes from. Well, you know, yeah. where where do these ideas come from? So, the further back I looked, the the more I I became interested in prehistory, and and the first the first semi or pseudo religions uh, yeah. where you, there, there was still faith, but I found it to be simpler and and much much more pure you know mm. they 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 prayed to the, the the things that were around them and basically mm. nature planet it's that which allows you to thrive and survive you know uh nature that which you feed off um and and earth itself and it, on in many occasions you know we, we were, every anybody who's studied prehistory knows that back then it was matriarchies yeah why? Because it was it, it was the only thing that could set, sustain us, like like procreation. And unfortunately, when power became involved, and when exchange, and when when materialism things mm -hmm. became involved, and then they started to worship other things. And and I think that's where it all kind of went wrong. <laughs> but I love the way that the show uses faith as a real source of energy because I believe that you know when uh, um, you believe something, it, it can make those things happen. You know, I, I think faith is, is is fundamental for anything that that you want in life. Um, so so I do love the way that they they use that in the show. Adriel is is very 
a lot a lot more libertarian than 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 Catholicism. Exactly, exactly. But I so I completely agree with you that um the way Warrior Nun has approached faith um is so interesting and it sort of it changed the way that I perceived my own loss of faith because mm. I I don't like using that word anymore. I like to think of it as changing. Absolutely. I, I've always uh, I've always been a strong believer that it that faith is necessary, um, and to believe in what you may, as long as it doesn't cast away others or exactly. harm others, it's yeah. fine. It just makes you stronger to have faith in something, yeah. and faith is necessary. It has been since been since the dawn of time. Yeah. It what it's what makes us human. Mainly, it it derives from uh, a, a necessity to believe what happens when we're no longer here. You know, yeah. it's hard for us to understand or admit that that it's all over when we're over but i do believe that that it it's necessary for us to carry on in life and in, in the hopes that you know we'll meet our loved ones again or the road won't be over for us you know but there are religions that that are very blocking when it comes to other beliefs or or, or existences you know yeah. or the way people you know, sometimes I'm like, well, not that I'd want to live in the Greek or Roman time. They hmm. seem to be a lot. More <laughs> it seems to be a little bit more loosey goosey. It's a, it's less harsh. Yeah, but yeah, I, I've always found found that somewhere along the way we we became closed minded as to so many other things. These are definitely different times, and and I, I think we have to re reevaluate. You know, this is. This is Adriel talking on me. <laughs> well, well and truly just into Ange talks to Adriel for a second and then we come back, right? I, I, I guess it would be a lot more fun to have someone like Adriel running the Vatican. <laughs> At least it would be a lot more interesting. You know, anybody well, anybody who disagrees gets possessed. You know what? Yeah. You know, it'd be a very there'd be lots of simple solutions for very complicated problems, you know? <laughs> Solutions. I'd love to talk a little bit about the like action sequences in Warrior Nun because they are sort of what really defines the show aside from the you know as we talked about the handling of religion and the um the relationship of the sisters when you see a Warrior Nun action scene you know it's from Warrior Nun <laughs> you know what I mean so how was it for you because you sort of acted as um the central point to a lot of the fight scenes, as opposed to being actively engaging with the fighting yourself. Um, it was sort of more just like whew, around you. It was hard because yeah. I love action scenes. And I, I since uh, early on in my career, I, I love to get involved in action, action scenes. Like um, as the, like one of the, one of the biggest stunt teams there is in Spain it was always saying to me, dude, if you're not working and you, and you want to do some work with us, like just cause I'm good with horses, I'm good with swords, yeah. I'm good with fight scenes. I, I've been doing it for a long time and yeah. I, I've been trained. So it was very hard for me to stand back <laughs> and have all this. It's like, but there comes a time, I guess, you know, at the same time I was happy because sometimes I was like, I want the text. I want the text. I want, I want those. I want to be that actor that can, that people look for or, or want on their show because he delivers he delivers the lines he delivers yeah. the story and you know when the, that's starting to happen now I miss the action um, yeah. and and as you say Adriel this season was a character that was not basically but mainly there to help tell the story to help mm. to help lead the story along yeah. It was very difficult for me because I had pages and pages of text sometimes, and I was just like, yeah. "Oh, please don't make it boring. Please, please don't." Because people are gonna be like, "Dude, just shut the fuck up I'm with the action." And the, and I was like, and usually I, I'm in the action. Yeah. So a scene where I'm just st standing around and watching things happen. <laughs> yeah, it's not second nature for you. This isn't no. This isn't. This isn't good. Obviously, I had to be on that stage while everybody else were doing their pieces of yeah. the puzzle that you don't then fit together. Yeah. So my time on that stage, just looking around, <laughs> was actually not just down to the minutes that you see on camera. It was like hours of me on that stage, just just <laughs> looking, doing what I wanted to do. Um, 
you know, thankfully, uh, I, I do get to a bit of a fight at the end. But yes. by then, the, you know, we we needed to get through that. It wasn't it, the fight wasn't as long as we would have wanted mm. it to be. It wasn't as impressive either because you get you get there at the end of the show. You, you already know you're over budget and you yeah. don't know how much you're going to have for the VFX. So you try and make it. And because Alba was in everything and it was obviously the show didn't want to over exhaust her. And yeah. she had a lot. She had so much. And to, uh, to add another huge fight to, yeah. to her schedule, bless her heart. She, she did. She did a lot of that final fight with me, but um it, it becomes dangerous too. She has yeah. a sword in her hand. She, she did whack me on the side of the head with it on, on one occasion. But thankfully, I'm very hard-headed, so it wasn't too bad. You'll have a prop but sword that's was, not sharp. There's no danger. I was cringe. She was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, no, no, it's fine. So in, in front double, and we continued. And, and she had to go and film on that day too so you know there was so much going on thankfully i think everybody involved was good with action so a lot of us could do our own our own fight scenes like yeah. <laughs> the, my my stunt double rafa he's a guy i've known for many years I, I think his first job was actually with me in a short movie one of his first jobs so we'd known each other for a long time that's and then pretty got awesome into, yeah and so he showed up with a wig and you know <laughs> wearing the same costume and he looks to me he says i'm not gonna get to do anything am i i was like nah <laughs> now i'm doing uh, the the only the only moment he did was when michael's body explodes and he gets pulled back by the wire because i yeah. was like right i'm gonna go and sit down <laughs> but the same it was the same in the in season one i actually had daniel craig stunt double playing Adriel's stunt double and wow. he he basically didn't get to do much except jump off a four meter wall which i i was very thankful for him <laughs> doing because my knees aren't that good anymore yeah but he was also called william so okay william you're up and we both get up and i was like no no it's it's me <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this but it's always good to know that they're there and and lee and kuko and everybody from the stunt team was so professional so amazing um they they really had our backs on everything and they made sure that everything was was safe so it was it, it was great because i didn't mind getting in to do the stunts myself yeah with the actors or with the stunt doubles because i knew we were already gonna be, always going to be safe yeah they 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 did an incredible job i mean they I, I kuko who was one of the guys in charge of stunts i've known him for maybe 18 years wow so it's always great when we're going to work together because but he knows what i can do and what i can't so you know, if he feels that that um, there's something that might be particularly difficult, I, I, I'm never gonna get difficult with him. It's always gonna be like, yeah. William, I think you know this, and I'll be like, yeah, well, if you say so. Yeah, we got a great relationship, and they they they're an amazing team. I mean, well, you just have to watch the action scenes to realize that you know that some of the some of the fight scenes are better than than things that have a hundred times the budget that we. Yeah, Simon gratefully when I spoke to him told me all about the uh the puzzle of the budget versus the coolness of the fight scenes um so not many know this but what Simon Barry has done with the budget that we had for this show well not only Simon Barry uh the embassy VFX like yeah. it's a miracle it is yeah. miraculous like n people don't know we we have a very small budget compared to i'd say any other show on netflix mm. to deliver, deliver yeah on a wide scale you know um we're very cost effective <laughs> we love people who can work to a budget yeah no it's it but it's incredible and you know you can only see how good it was from the records that it's breaking you know with rotten tomatoes and the audience reviews and you know it's the only show with 99 percent audience reviews after six thousand ratings it's insane i'm, I'm really happy with that because at the end of the day it is a sci-fi show you know it doesn't pretend to be anything else yeah and i know there are shows that are, that are so much more serious you know i think i think two of my favorite things out there right now are I'd probably have to say Andor. I, I think of redone the Star Wars universe in, yeah. in such a clever and intelligent way, and I was I was like, finally, finally, you've done cards with Star Wars, which yeah. I find I find to be so so cool. And then the White Lotus, I love because yes. 
White Lotus is is is, is humanity at, at its worst, yes, and it I is. love it. I love it. I love it. I love how power, money, and sex just mm-hmm. just turn the most horrible of people. Um, and White Lotus is it's like it's like watching a, 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 a series done by by Sorrentino. You know, it's so yeah. well filmed. It's so beautiful. the acting is so amazing, and then. Yeah. You know, obviously you have House of Dragon, Game of Thrones, but those budgets are so huge, and and the genres they work with need those budgets because. Yeah. But for us to have that that kind of rating, um, and the the I think the reviews and the critics see past the fact that this is a, a YA genre yeah. uh, classified show, um, and they don't judge it for that. They 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 dive into to talk about its merits and 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 its positives and and I think that's why we have such a high rating because I think what has been done with the show is 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 close to miraculous you know yeah. and I think I think that is all it is all Simon Barry he makes the right choices you know I I direct myself and I I I, I believe d- directing is delegating and and he gets the right people to do the job and and that that it, that in itself is is a talent that is so hard to find and i think it is the bright talent that a showrunner should have and that's why he's such a great showrunner he and everybody has made such an incredible season two and setting it up for uh for hopefully to bring that renewal for season three and beyond i'm almost grateful that netflix didn't give us any promotion because i don't know if it was done on purpose to see whether we could pull it off again this yeah. season or whether season one was a fluke because it was locked down and you know people had gone through everything so they were like well let's give this a chance it's, it sounds so bizarre and crazy yeah only done better than season one i think it's brought season one back onto the charts and mm-hmm. and with with no with no pr whatsoever except for you know i i don't usually do what we're doing right now but because of the amazing and overwhelming fan reactions i i just thought i think they deserve a bit of one-on-one a bit of time with us because they're not going to get in any other way. Um, not yeah. that I'm blaming Netflix for it. I, no, no, as I said, I, if it has been done on purpose, I think it's very clever. Mm. It, it, you you do always root for an underdog. And and I think that in, in a certain way we are. I think Warrior Nun is definitely the underdog at Netflix. And just on that, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to have a chat with me about this. I know it isn't something that you do very often, but it... Uh... Thank you for for asking us because yeah, sometimes they're like why aren't we getting any interviews from <laughs> or, uh, fans will ask why don't why aren't we getting any interviews well sometimes people aren't asking us you yeah. know sometimes it's just a question of of writing to the actor yeah. I, I know that some of them are really busy or some of them won't won't do like they're waiting yeah, for, of course. for offers but i i just think you know especially with the fans and how how the fandom has worked on this show uh, I, I think it's it's a given. It's a lovely thing that you're taking your time to do. I really adored that walking on water scene uh, that you did at the Temple of the God in Madrid. What was that sequence like for you to film with, you know, I know the locusts were in VFX. It was very special when they told me that I was going to film there. The Temple of Devod is is my favourite spot in Madrid. I, I, I studied history and archaeology. I became an archaeologist and I'd always been obsessed with Egypt. I ended up working in Egypt with the UCL, the wow. University of London College of Alexandria. But I've been to Egypt on several occasions. I'm in love with it. And and it's one of those places where I just feel at home. And so I've I've done most of my career in Spain. I've spent many, many years fighting for my career in Madrid, somewhere where to be a foreign actor it's very difficult because it, it, Spain can become very insulating sometimes and they yeah. do fight for their own productions and their own industry, yeah. which I think is great, but sometimes you get caught up in being the outsider and I have felt that on several occasions here and, and, and it did upset me greatly at the beginning of my career especially. Yeah. And The Temple of Devob was, was the place I'd go and try and cheer myself up. Wow. So it, it's always been very special for me and to be able to do that there was, I'd say, one of the highlights of my career. Um, and and then to do it in such a extraordinary and fashionable way, <laughs> you know, with that outfit. And yes. I, I, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if they have 
footage of, of the bloopers, but I was barefoot and there was some slippage slippage involved. <laughs> um, oh no! You know, and I had costume like really worried about the the skirt oh. and everything. Oh, it's gonna get so wet. So I had people like with hair dryers. So it was all kind of hilarious, you know. Yeah, I'm standing in front of an Egyptian temple in Madrid, dressed up as Jesus, uh, uh, spooky Jesus. <laughs> Euro trash with people with hair dryers for every time I finish the scene, dress the dry my gown. <laughs> I always find the funny side of things, and, and that was definitely one of them. Yeah. yeah, the Euro trash Jesus thing is one of my favorite things that's come out of Twitter with Warrior Nun season two. Funny. I don't know who did the Slade reel. Um, I don't whoever like this, this, this is just a, it's, it's a fraction of a second that I just I know like that and the. They're so quick. The fans who make these memes are so fast. I love I love interacting with fans through memes because I, I just think they're hilarious and yeah. fun. And I always try and find something different and something, you know, I can be kind of kind of strange when it comes to that. But <laughs> I always have fun. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I when I, the first time I saw the Slade Drill meme, I, I thought this, I, this is great. Yeah. This is great. This is you got nuns with swords and guns. You know, how can that not get memed? Exactly. Instantly? And also I think it's in the nature of the show, right? The show is inherently very funny. You know, it's it's got that it's got that comic book theme. Yeah. Um, exactly. Which is one of the great things about the show. It was very hard for me to have to deliver all the you know, seriousness <laughs> and the, and uh, you know, it because it is hard to A play a timeless character. Yeah. You can't be yourself. You can't talk uh, in in a modern, contemporary way. Yeah, and be having to deliver all the information that's necessary for us to understand that this yeah. is a dangerous time and 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 humanity is at risk. Yeah, but I did get some some you know fun scenes that that I found you know I could I could do things with like you know my a scene. With Tristan. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I was like, I think, I think you should wear the suit. I, I really thought he, I was like, dude, you gotta have Armani Jesus go on stage. But <laughs> it didn't happen. But yeah. I, I was great that, that he doesn't get away with things like maybe you know maybe next time so i want to just talk about um adriel's conversation uh adriel's relationship with vincent uh quickly because i think that's such an interesting dynamic and the um the depth you bring to that with tristan we know that adriel makes contact with vincent very very early it's sort of understood from season two that it was probably taking place well and truly before season one what do you sort of feel is the significance of that bond uh, between them how did you sort of play that relationship it was easy for me to work with Tristan because um I don't know if people know this Tristan is a, is a, is a regarded as as one of Spain's best actors and yeah. and he is he is an incredible performer yeah. um I've had the luck to uh have been at an, an, uh, an up-and-coming actor admiring his work to become his friend to become his work colleague on many occasions so so we we know each other and to work off somebody you know and love is is always amazing inevitably some of the, some of that personal relationship that we have is is behind the 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 adriel vincent relationship yeah. as in their own relationship i i'm not really sure because i do think he just uses him yeah and i don't know at what point i think he probably uses him in particular because he was easy to access as a sinner. Where he got his Divinium tattoos from, I don't recall if he explains no. when and where. I don't think he does. But I can imagine, and this is this is my own. Of course. Um, this is William Head you know, I, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I imagine him, I imagine Adriel reaching out to one of the worst, the worst, uh, yeah. you know, kind of people. Um, and that person uh, making that person get in touch with Vincent when he was what he was when he was a uh, procurator for the mafia or whatever because yeah. I know Tristan does, know, it does have his own ideas of past the character mm. and for when he got his tattoos that were that were part of that, that 
group of people that he was involved with, yeah. Adriel making sure that they were something that he could use to get into Vincent's head and then manipulate him in some way to get close yeah. to the OCA. Um, and once he has a pawn inside there, I, I do think he, he just used him. It, it, comes, it, get, it gets to a point where, same as with Michael, I have no need for you anymore. He utilizes these these instruments, but it's not that he has no use for them anymore. But if they betray him, then they are not no longer useful yeah. for him. I think his his agenda, his schedule is is so tight to get to where he needs to get yeah. to to achieve what he needs to achieve that he doesn't have time to try and explain to these people what the overall plan is. Yeah, because the concept might be too much for them to accept. You know, if, yeah. if somebody says to you, listen, I need to do what I'm going to do right now, but 80% of humanity is going to die for uh, millions of planets to be able to survive. I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying mm. that's what I think that, yeah. you know, something like that is going on. Mm. Um, of course, if, if you're one of the, if you're one of the ones that's going to die, the greater good <laughs> might not be so appealing. Yes. Uh, so he, I think Adriel just moves through. He just pushes forward. Yeah. Uh, it would be interesting to know why and where he comes from and why he needs, he, he so desperately needs to do what he does. Mm. It makes me think of guerrilla war, you know, in yeah. the time of Castro, Che Guevara. Yeah. You don't have time to dwell on making people understand what you're doing. Yeah. And if you have dissenters within your, within your unit, you have to deal with it. Yeah, and sometimes in a way that might not be the humane or might not be the best, but you need to push forward. Yeah, because if not, it's going to stall you, and anything that stalls you at that moment in time might mean the the, the overall defeat. I don't know if I'm making any sense. No, no, you absolutely <laughs> no, a thousand percent you are. His role in the entire narrative is so complicated. I think he's a very lonely character. Yes, I think he's very alone, and that's why. He tries not to get close to people because he knows that if he has to do something like this, it's just, you know, mm. I'm going to have to dispose of them. There is, there is a moment that he actually loses his cool. And we filmed the scene twice with his usual uh, demeanor, with, mm. with his cool, which is when he's first face to face with uh, Rhea. It's the only time we see him just go bat shit crazy. Yeah. Um, and it was important for me to do it that way because he's wanted it for so long. And that's where I think you can see the real him. And the yeah. real him is the, uh, is the person who has this deep rooted hate for her. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, would be to see where that comes from and why, yeah. because we've seen him so ahead of the game, so calm, so in control of everything. And as soon as he has her in front of him, he loses all of it. And I think that's why that's why he actually ends up being defeated yeah. at the end of season two. Because he loses his call. Cool. He loses it. I think the big question is what is behind that. And this is something the audience, some of them have caught on to it. Because when he does lose it and he says to her, I will do to you what, what, what you did to me. I will yeah. keep you. I will keep you alive. I will feed off you. Yeah. And I will use your power to save. Not to not to control or to become you. Mm -hmm. I will use it to save every living being that you have had under your fist. Or yeah. under your, I can't remember the exact words. Yeah, yeah. Somebody usually when you, you when you lose control like that and you 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 get into a heated argument. Well, there wasn't an argument. It was a one way like yeah. accusation. Mm. You don't accuse them of because at that moment. Ava doesn't exist for him. Yeah. Lilith doesn't exist for him. Yeah. It is it is just him and her, yeah. him and Rhea. And he accuses her, directly accuses her of, of having done this. So I think it would be important for us to realize that there's there's a lot more truth to, to what Adriel's saying than, than lies. And maybe he hasn't gone about it the right way according to the brief flick of a candle that is a human life, but yeah. maybe in the overall story 
it is interesting to, to consider what's going on. And that's why I think, that's why I really think we need a season three so we can find out. <laughs> straight from William, straight from, uh, straight from Adriel himself. The obsession Adriel has with the brandy. It's hilarious. That is so funny. And it, the, he's brought it, you brought it up multiple times. Good, brilliant writing. But every time the little like, smirk from you was just too good (laughs) (laughs) i found it hilarious i just thought it was hilarious that that, you know and there is there is a blue for that hasn't been shown i'm so angry with it um uh, there's there's i actually at the end of because because we did a one that scene was done in a one shot yeah on me on joaquin yeah and they only the only time we see a lateral shot is when I'm turning the water into wine and at the end of that scene it's kind of it's kind of this shot and I was kind of like this and then I just turned into camera and spoke about the FBC <laughs> and how much better we were than 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 the Catholic Church because <laughs> hey you know we don't only turn water into wine we turn it into brandy the FBC takes gives you that one extra one extra step yeah hilarious everyone was like cracking up and i was like okay that's gonna make the blooper real because i love doing it. i love doing it on set sometimes it's just turn into camera break cool things yeah and and do a bit of an ad <laughs> um and, and sadly it hasn't come out another one when we were, when we were doing all the the digital shots we had to do like 360 yeah. surround camera thing and yeah. you know we got to drag all the different outfits so they can make digi doubles of us and i showed up in the in the camera ball with because i know the people from costume they're really good friends of mine they're some of the best costume uh wardrobe places in the world Cornejo. and i was like can i just borrow this it was a ruby red dress kind of like something marilyn monroe would wear for and i just managed to fit myself into that and i did it i <laughs> i did it for for winston and the guys at the embassy vfx because i was like please send them this <laughs> so they have a double of Adriel in incomplete drag. And, but it, I don't think it was ever sent. And I was so annoyed. I was like, come on guys, don't be so serious. That that but, seems like something that needs to be released to the fans to just boost Sladriel into the stratosphere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I, you know, I, I always try and have fun on set because I, I, I think, you know, it, it, it can't all be, uh, us as performers, we spend a lot of time waiting for work to happen. And when it does, it, that's our vacation. You yeah. know, our vacation is work because we wouldn't do this if we didn't love it because there's so much heartache and, yeah. and, and, and trauma behind w- wanting to work and wanting to not, not have success, but success for us means that we get work yeah. doing something we love doing. And that only happens to a very small amount of us. So when we do get to work, I like to have fun. And if you're on a set with the with the team from Mori and Nun, there are a lot of laughs. Yeah. And sometimes you want that to transcend the camera a bit. You know, you want the blooper reel, you want this yeah. and that. You just you know, it's like season one. I remember one of my first scenes and I'm I'm smelting the 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 divinium armor down into like liquid divinium so we can make the sword or whatever. Yeah. And art, the art department had built this huge smelting machine. I don't know what's called. What do you what do you call those things that to, to blow? Billows. Into the there, right? a, there was a huge billow, a huge, and a chain hanging off it, and it was functional. You pull the chain, yeah. and and the billow would like blow into the fire. And I was I was just dressed up in this monk outfit or whatever it was, and I was just like, "Hey Simon, what if she comes out?" And I'm I'm just pulling the chain on the just like this huge pillow behind me it's like and it's like you know hello <laughs> i see you are fucking awake and and they were all cracking up and it was like and simon didn't know me that well yet and he was like mm-hmm. you're not serious i was like serious no it's only it's a, but but it was just seeing me in the robes and doing that i because i love comedy i love yeah. comedy to me it's the most difficult genre and the one I enjoy doing the most and when you're dressed in that kind of outfit when you have all of these crazy things around you yeah. and nuns with guns it just yeah. you know the out it comes out of the pores mm. and you can't help diving into it sometimes and and yeah. we did have a lot of fun on set you know that, that there is 
there there were a lot of funny moments and the the crew all had a great sense of humor um yeah. so so uh, <laughs> sadly i'm we don't get to see a lot of that, but it, a lot of it was there. And that's why I think yeah. the show works so well too, because it was a pleasure to, to actually yeah. film it. One sort of of the more serious moments is, of course, where Duretti is struck by lightning <laughs> and sort of sizzles onto the stage. Um, a Vatican barbecue. The Vatican barbecue. Yes, exactly. The the annual Vatican barbecue. Um, yeah, I love that dueling prophets moment and- of the, uh, the argument that's happening there. It's very, it's... Um, it's very cool, but for some reason, I would have you seen Monty Python? <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could think of in that entire scene was he's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy. I just boy. <laughs> there is a lot of life of Brian in it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean if if instead of Adriel they'd called him Brian, it would have been it would have been quite hilarious. It would have been. Um, I remember calling Simon and saying are we actually going to burn the Pope? And he was like, yeah. I was like, I might get excommunicated for this. Yeah. Uh, uh, we all might. Like, I, I mean, I was like, yeah, let's, let's, <laughs> let's do it. But, but it was, it was that, that to me was like, wow, this show really, really does go all in. It was wonderful to do because Joaquin is is Joaquin Almeida. You know, he's he's an incredible performer. He's an amazing actor. He has amazing and incredible presence. He's got a lot of character. Joaquin has a lot of character. And to me, it was very funny. So when some people get upset or angry sometimes, and rightly so, like he never does it. He never he never got angry without without reason. Yeah, but people. I find very funny when they're angry and <laughs> and sometimes you're just hoping they're going to explode because they're hilarious when they do. Yeah. And he was, and to see him do that dressed as the Pope was, it just made it even better. Uh, I have very fond memories of that day. A, yeah. because I had a, a, a second one-on-one with Joaquin Almeida and, and, and for me as a performer, that was a dream. Yeah uh and b because i just thought it was all hilarious and because i had people off stage with t-shirts with kind of like um andy warhol like <laughs> t-shirt my face on them like fbc <laughs> Ad- adrialite uh characters with with t-shirts with my face on yeah them. And I, I, insanely funny uh, it, it 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 all was very Monty Python, and and I, yes, I I was brought up with Monty Python because I have a very very close relationship with Terry Gilliam. The first movie, I, the first set I was ever on was Baron from Munchausen. The comedy is is always there because you know. Yeah. I haven't actually told Terry to watch Warrior Nun because he'll either get obsessed with it and think it's hilarious, or he'll be like, "What? What are you guys doing?" What this is? Why have you made it serious? It should be so much funnier. But all in all, I, I think it was a a good day for a roast. <laughs> not not only literally, literally, but you know, I think that Adriel makes a lot of a lot of good points when he yeah. accuses Pope. Absolutely. Because let's put it let's put it this way: Duretti wasn't a very nice guy. Anyway. He knows that that the church's power is being being given yeah. by this, but. And he still doesn't want to give Adriel his kudos where he deserves them. He's like, dude, you know all of this is a sham. Yeah. In our fictional world, you know, I I, I, I mean no disrespect to the Catholic Church. <laughs> Within our fictional world, this is what happens. And 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 according to that timeline, according to that uh, genre of what we're doing, yeah. This guy knows that they've been using these beings uh, yeah. and and saying that they're divine to 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 acquire their own power. And not only that, they decided to control one of them afterwards by by locking him up. That yeah. isn't a very not a very nice thing to do. It's very, so I, pretty I dirty. Adriel was going light on him when he said, "Okay, <laughs> listen." Let's let's call it even. You've locked me up for a thousand years. You've been using me, but if you do this for me, 
no one needs to get hurt. You can still be, you know, my my right hand man, my wingman. Yeah. But I need you to do this. And mm. and he refuses, even though he knows that this guy's right. That is all about power. It's like, no, took me this to become the Pope. I wanted to become the Pope. I wanted to become number one. No, uh, I don't want to be number two. You know, to me, there was a lot of that going on. It yeah. was the politics. Mm. And Definitely. I Adriel great strategist and a great politician and he did give him a second chance not only once but twice yeah. and you said no okay well the only way i'm going to be able to do this is getting rid of you but i have to do it in such a way that it looks like it wasn't me adriel was allowing lilith to see that she had freedom um and you know she could come to understand herself and lilith was there to help adriel reach his end right um I think what a lot of people would like to know from you is do you think there was anything genuine in the edges of romance there or was it the effort from them both sort of as means to each other's ends? I think that we weren't given enough time to to properly explain that relationship. Yeah. I think that Adriel is very curious to know what, what is happening with her. Yeah that he sees the potential in something that he can use as an ally and someone that he can use as an ally. He needs to present himself as non-threatening to her. Yeah. And for that, he needs to explain who he is and be honest about it. There is a scene where Lilith says, who are you or what are you? And he says, I am the angel Adrian. And he says, yeah. But, and she says, no, but seriously, you know. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm many things. And she says, are you, are you the devil? And he says, I've been called that. But I, I, don't, I, I don't think they wanted to misguide people with yeah. calling Adriel. Because Adriel isn't the devil and, and he's definitely not Lucifer. And he's, yeah. um, I don't think, I don't think, this is me. Again, this is my own. Yeah. Um, but he say, you know, the book of Re Revelations, the Bible, the, 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 the Quran, that they, they all talk about the same thing is uh the, the same it's the same message but just told differently yeah you know i've been called many things i have many names but to you you need to understand that all of it is true and none of it is true you know these are stories passed down from generation to generation i did an interview the other day where it's funny how they tell the story of adriel and adriel's telling the story to lilith but he's he's telling it it's a first-hand account yeah there's lot you know, Mina's character is telling the story that's been passed down through generations on a book. Yeah. yeah. Who do you believe? I do think that Adriel wouldn't lie to Lilith because he's not sure if she could see through his yeah. lies. There's a moment when she first comes to him and David Hayter was 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 there that night and he said he said he gave me a, a key clue as to how to approach her and how to treat her he says you know she's been to the other side you don't know if she's brought something back with her okay like um is kinraya here or see through her okay. and that is dangerous for you. yeah so there's a moment where he says look at me and he looks into her eyes because he would be able to identify that yeah. and when he does he says hey you are you i don't know what you are but let's find out he wants her on his side he doesn't know how she's going to approach him. And I wish they'd written more lines for, for Lorena because she, you know, she, not only would have, would she have delivered them beautifully and it would, mm. would have, it would have given a chance, more of a chance of a tete a tete. Um, but we would have seen more of what is going on with her because yeah. she does make the right choice. If, if I can't figure out what's going on with me here, I need to go and see someone who can. Yeah. And he he does help her understand. There's yeah. no way you can fight this. Yeah. You need to give yourself to it. So I think he becomes, in a way, if it had been told, if we'd had more time to tell the story, I think he would have been more of a of a teacher, father figure. But I think it was necessary to mutate it into something yeah. else because of the time available to do so. Got it. Okay. Um, I think it was a question of storytelling. Whether we got it right or wrong, I, I'm not sure. Um, but with the time we had, 
um, I think I think it was necessary to to seal that relation to some kind of way to make him manipulate her up to the up to the extent that she delivers herself to him, and then we understand that she is with him. The eight episodes weren't giving us that time. I, I also want to talk briefly about the um, dynamic that develops between Adriel and Camilla. How was it to play the nuances of those scenes with Olivia, you know, being in each other's minds in terms of the scene? Um, what I was that like? I, I love my scenes with her because I, 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 I love her character. I think it's one of my favourites. Yeah. I, I think Olivia's character is one of my favourites. Camilla is just great. She yeah. has such great liners. I think what they made her do with me was so out of character for her that that you know I also think she 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 enjoyed that it's like yeah. oh I'm gonna get to do different I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna be able to get, get a face to face with the villain yeah um, but I also love Olivia I I I think she's so she's so great she's. She's such an intelligent actress and she's such a great person. I'm I'm probably like three heads taller than she is. <laughs> so it was it was really funny to see <laughs> her stand up to me because if I got too close, she was like she was like down <laughs> here. So it's great to have her looking up and and still, you know, with a fire mm. in her eyes. And I was like, yeah, you go, girl, you go. <laughs> Give it to Adriel. I think it was great. I think it was it, it was a clever it was it was a clever twist. I think that he's always trying to get in the minds of the weaker. Yeah. And I think he he made a miscalculation there. Uh, you know, she she turned it on him, and he he wasn't expecting. I think Adriel's very used to manipulating people, and he's very used to choosing the right ones for manipulation. Yeah. I think that the. the Camilla's character grows in this season because she's forced to take things into her own, her own hands. Definitely. And that's what makes her react and, and face Adriel. Mm. And she, she always had the intelligence. And I think she, you know, she's good with machines and electronics. So yeah. she decided to use it as, as such a thing. You know, that, that, that um, gadget intelligence was like, well, wait a minute. Even though it's otherworldly, it, it was the right one for it. Um, what was hilarious was, was that you know, the, the it's it's who you'd consider to be uh, a weak or small character kicking the beast's ass, and and I, I thought I thought great. Right, I think she, I think she did an amazing job. I think she did an amazing job at doing something hard, which was breaking character to get into something that was unusual for her character and still staying in character. I yeah. think she. She's an incredible actress and she's she's a wonderful person and she's just a delight to work with. As somebody who's five foot four, I very deeply related to the moments where she was like, I'm also an Aries. So I like that like chihuahua, like angry energy and looking <laughs> up at someone. I feel it to my core. Um, so I loved uh, Camilla this season. Just She had such good chemistry with Sylvia this season. You know? Yes. It made such a great duo. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed watching them together. So I said it to Christina as well. One of my favorite scenes of the season was the uh, erotic pastry van. I thought that was just Yeah. It was it was close to burning the Pope. <laughs> having nothing pastries. I was like, okay. I I really think I I don't. I I think that if nuns have net Netflix, I bet there's loads of them watching this show. Absolutely, I would love to hear from them. <laughs> I'd love to hear. I'd, I'd love to hear their thoughts. Send them a box of pastries. That'd be <laughs> imagine. That'd be incredible. If you, if you give me your feedback from watching the show. I'll send you a box of pastries. Actually, just don't say <laughs> you're giving me some very good promotional ideas. The fans are going to take that and run with it, I reckon. Just sending <laughs> boxes of erotic pastries to uh Netflix, to churches. Free. <gasps> Netflix offices with boxes of penis-shaped pastry. They're, they're going to know it's for Warrior Nun. It's the least threatening Warrior Nun symbol that could be sent to them, you know? It's like, it's, it'd be a bit more intense to send them like a sword, you know what I mean? So like a box of erotic pastries, it's harmless, it's fun, yeah. tasty. And uh, it would get the message across. And I'm sure some you know, some of the workers there will definitely eat them. You know, they'll be walking around the office. 
you know, some of the bosses will be like, what is, what is, what is that you're eating? Well, you know, <laughs> renew warrior renew enough. Warrior. It's a great idea. I saw, honestly, you're doing the promo for them. I think that's, I think that's great. So what was your favorite scene of season two? I'm going to, I'm going to talk about three. Number one, when I'm, when I first appear to Camilla, because yeah. I got to stand in front of Las Meninas de Velázquez yeah. in the Prado Museum, uh, for over an hour wow and i had it to my and uh i you know what can i say that, that's incredible that's not about adriel it's about william miller standing in front of uh, an amazing work of art and being yeah. able to enjoy it and that, that this show gave me that you know the, the character gave me that number two i have to say one of my scenes with Tristan, the, the the soup scene, because I, I just found it to be so deliciously written. Yeah. And and there were so many little nuances there and there were so many little moments. And because I got to do a slight bit of comedy, um, yeah. which I really enjoy. And because uh, I love working with Simon and and I got to have him directing me in that one because I, I didn't get much of work with him this, yeah. this season. Um, and number three, um, my final scene with with Alba, because we didn't get much interaction this season. Yeah. And I, th I think she's a star. I think she's going to become someone that we're not going to have enough of in the future. Very, 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 very few people get to be stars, get to make projects happen or break them. And I've, I think I've met maybe i've had the pleasure of meeting two three of them in my 25 years of career wow. and she's one of them. and to be with someone like that and see them see them just not it's not even work because it comes so easily to them it just they just are it's moving to be able to do it and and to be able to be in front of someone so young and see them come into their own and you know and, and know know that they're doing everything right to to be where they they I'm sure will be one day. Do you think, you know, when we get a season three, will you be back? Um will will we hopefully maybe see some more of Adriel? It's not up to me. I'm kind of like Sean Bean. I get killed in everything I do, you know? <laughs> the t shirts that I've seen save Sean Bean. Uh, <laughs> we need to save William Miller. <laughs> Keep him alive, please. Just, you know, I mean, if anybody's watching from House of Dragon and you need a good stock, <laughs> but um, I always believe, you know, it, it always has to be what's best for the story. I had a huge upset when I got, you know, killed off on the 100 because we had talked about how to 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 make the character survive. And, and, and I'd, I'd come up with some very interesting ideas that actually would have would have been really cool but you got to go with with the decision that the storytellers make and yep. no matter how much it hurts because you become you could become great friends with the cast you love the character yeah it's it's the story that matters you know we're here to help tell a story we're not here to be the story whether it could happen or not obviously it could yeah yes and we have discussed what the possible proper ways <laughs> would be now, whether whether or not, as I said, uh, yeah. at the moment on the table because we they don't even have a renewal. Um, yeah. Would I like to? Absolutely. Uh, they, they become my family, and it's it's very rare for us to be able to be part of something when it begins. Yeah, it doesn't happen every day to be part of a series that becomes something. It, it, at least I think this is the second time in my career that it's happened to me that I am part of something from the beginning and something that that has received so much praise and 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 so and such big following and and, and such a heartfelt likability. Yeah. Um. So obviously, I'd 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 love to. Up to Simon. Well, no, but I think that'll I, that'll make I'll, the fans feel I'll a lot Simon, better. I'll send, I'll send Simon and David some peanut shaped pastries. See what happens. Yes. Yes. I also really would love to briefly talk about the fans of Warrior Nun because as we said earlier, they are doing the most. They are now going to be, you know, working out how to send penis pastries to everybody they can. Um, they're working so hard for a season three. Love that. Um, I, I would love that. 
I think I think when they when they got to renew, I think it was Lucifer. They wanted another season, that, and, and I think the the fans like rented a blimp to fly around the Netflix building for like yeah. days. But I think our approach could be so much funny. Um, do you have any messages from you or or from Adriel that you would like to send to the fans to help their fight for season three? I, I do it every day. Every day I try and go on Twitter a couple of times and, and, and you know, interact just, just a little to, to, to let them know that they're, 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 they're being listened to at least by us and that we're there with them and that we really appreciate everything they're doing. And, and it's very humbling and it's very, I mean, I've, I've never felt something like that before. And, and it's, it's great. I, you, obviously, you can't ask them to do more than they're yeah. doing, and, and sometimes you, sometimes you just, it's, it's heartwarming. But you're just like, listen, don't make your lives about it because whatever happens, is whatever's going to happen. You know, what will be will be. But thank you, thank you so much for everything you're doing. I mean, really, uh, and that's why. That's, I think, my best way to, to say thank you is to do things like this, you know. I, I'm, I'm usually a very private person. I, I, I don't usually give interviews because yeah. of the nature of the work that I do as, as an actor. Um, uh, because I always find it's dangerous to get known as a person if you're going to do a character. But for this, I just felt, you know, this this is my thank you. It's... it's, it's uh, get getting allowing you to get to know me a bit so so you know that we can and and we're here and you know we we hear you and we read you and 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 we're behind you yeah the way i see my role in uh in all this is i like to be the bridge between the fans and you guys thank you very much for um for all you gave and continue to give to warrior nun to the fandom um, and to this community because it's it's really appreciated and I see it on Twitter as well where they just they love you and you know it, it gives them hope and it gives them drive to continue fighting for a season three so yeah thank you very much for all you've given to the show thank you, thank you very much and and here we are we're with you uh <laughs> praise praise worry on Praise Warrior Nun, praise Adriel. We're wrapping up with my questions um, as a really quick little game. It's about thinking quickly. Don't think on it too hard. I will give you a Warrior Nun character, and all you need to do is tell me what music genre would be their uh, their go-to. What's their their style? Okay. Yeah? Okay. So, okay. Lilith. Oh, okay. Lilith, uh, rock and roll. Yep. Uh, Mother Superior. Heavy metal. Yes. Um, Camilla. Camilla Paypal. <gasps> so true. So true. Um, Beatrice. Beatrice. Wow. Um, sorry, I'm thinking too much about this, but Beatrice, <laughs> Beatrice is because she's, you know, I I I I really love her character, so Same. I want to be I want to get this one right. Mm -hmm. uh, Beatrice is Bohemian Rhapsody. I'd have to say that isn't. It's a genre in itself that yeah. song like yeah you know favorite rock songs of all time but it's not only rock so it has everything i absolutely feel that um ava ava i'm thinking too much aren't I? <laughs> I've, I've got through kind of a lot of the but i i'd say she's she, i'd say she's rock and roll too but yeah she's like the the 80s like what what genre was was you know guns and roses and motley yeah. crew yeah you know i see that i say if i said rock from the 90s it would be grunge and she's not grunge she's, mm. she's like a she's like, she's acd you know yeah yeah it's like the 70s 80s rock and roll yeah. type vibes yeah adriel adriel's classic all the way yep absolutely he's he's, 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 he's classic but he's, he i think no actually i think he he kind of like if he had a visit he'd put classical music on mm -hmm. and if he doesn't he'd probably be listening to like goth metal or something like that <laughs> like he just he just pretend to be to be suave and yeah and fine <laughs> i could also see him going to like some elvis or something like something really just like secretly he's a secret elvis admirer exactly like from his from his cave he he'd tune into sure the vatican had something imagine him pacing the cave going like 
Are you lonesome? Do you miss me? Are you sorry we drifted apart? Yeah, that's the end. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, for joining me. Thank you for serenading me. I feel very special. Um, <laughs> this has been just my absolute pleasure. I'd love to speak to you again in the future, whether it be for more Warrior Nun or something else, if you would be open to it. Absolutely. You, know, you just need to type. So everybody, please go and stream seasons one and two of Warrior Nun on Netflix. Pop it on repeat. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Take a note out of Adriel's book. Just recruit as many people as you can. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe here um, for more Warrior Nun chats in the future with more of the lovely cast and crew. Thank you very much. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Okay, take yeah. care. Bye-bye.